They are a people apart, the travelling people, living on the fringes of our society. No one knows where they came from or why they took to the road. Alone, defensive, living off their narrow skills, they have advanced little down the years, falling farther behind as our civilization developed. In the past, few noticed them and fewer cared. There was no one to say that only a minority of travelers lived past 30, or that 10% of their children died before reaching one year of age. Let the dead bury the dead, said Christ, and the travelers did so with terrifying monotony. Those who survived carried on into the next generation, bringing with them their little changing habits and their rapidly dying crafts. In them times, it was far easier to make it. I was doing dealing and horses at that, at that time, and it was far easier to earn a living than what it is now, but the years kept creeping on. I was just getting it harder and harder and harder to get a living. Because horses was plenty. I could go to a fair and I could buy two or three horses. Well, I could sell them and get maybe a tenner profit out of them again. Well, let me go to a fair today. If I buy a horse today in a fair, I mightn't get a pound on them. I might have to take them to the factory. And I might get two pound profit, I might have to take them to the factory. And as the profit in horses declined, the tinsmiths also lost their way of making a living, as plastic and mass production replaced the handmade buckets, pots and pans. And many of the travellers have been forced to find work wherever they can. The work I do, I go from door to door getting a scrap of the pony and car. I'll take old wardrobes, bottles, jumpers, I'll take anything. I'll clear away any rubbish money house. And I'm able to make a living out of it. I'm gone on now to the 60 mark, close to the 60, and I'm, I'm not fit for work. But I have a lot of young fellas here that is out every day seeking work and can't get it. Well, I get the best crop here in there, you know. And I get £7.17 a week in the door. Then the work goes around, making a bit as well, you know. Well, the way I work in, in scrap, excuse me, is uh, plumbers, builders and factories and places like that. Well, I have a contact that I have my customers there that do collect the stuff for me and I don't sell to anyone only myself. And mostly garages and batteries and stuff. Can you make a reasonable living out of it? Well, it's not that I'd ever be a millionaire, that I'd ever save money out of it, but I just get enough what, what keeps me going, what mm. do with me. Many itinerants who have no means of dealing in scrap and the like and who live in rural areas do seasonal agricultural work for those farmers who will employ them. They work on beet, on turnips and on potatoes. Few are permanently employed and most seem to prefer it this way. Henry Maxwell is a North County Dublin farmer. How long have you been employing it in? I'd say it's four years now. I started the first spring they were here. I, I took them on potatoes and potatoes. How did you find them? They're getting they're, every year. They're getting better. They're, they're um, just the same as anyone else. If you pay them well and, and look at treat them decently, they'll work well. Have you had many at any given time? Well, this just this one family, and I, I, I do them piecework. So it means that sometimes four turn in, sometimes six, sometimes three. Suits themselves, whatever time they turn in, what time they go home. Why do you have them on piecework? As I say, that, that suits them better because they, they're not tied to time. They don't like being tied to time. They come in at 10 o'clock one morning, 11 the next morning, and they can go home at 4 or go home at 6. And it suits, it suits me better because I don't have to wash them and clock them in and clock them out. But today, while the older itinerants carry on with odd and often insecure jobs, many of the younger people want steady jobs for the benefits such work can bring them.